Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tibet for Tuesday, June 19th. Here in the Atlantic, we're continuing to watch uh, the Northwest Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico region here for what I believe will be an attempt at some kind of tropical development over the next week or so of time. What's changed uh, a lot since the last time I made a video is we now know the originating disturbance comes from the Caribbean and you can see the area of thunderstorms in here. Uh, we originally thought that uh, as the models showed we may have gotten a monsoon low to come up into the Bay of Campeche. That has turned around. Lots of things change in the tropics. What we now know is that although the monsoon trough is creeping northward here, the main instigator is a tropical wave that came out of the central Caribbean and is now moving northwest and is now interacting with this monsoon low that's extending over the Gulf of Honduras and Central America here and is forming a long trough from the monsoon low all the way out to the northeast connecting to a front over the central Atlantic here and this is uh, forming this broad area of thunderstorms and cloudiness that you can see here and uh, this is a very broad area and not very concentrated right now there's a little bit of mid-level spin showing up in the western Caribbean but it is sheared away from the convection which is being sheared off to the east here due to upper level winds still being unfavorable at this point in time so this is a bit of a mess right now, uh, but it's going to be around for many days, and for now we'll be bringing lots of heavy rains to the Bahamas and South Florida, uh, but this may become a more concentrated feature as time goes on. Here's the surface map now, and uh, the low pressure is down here in the Caribbean, and it's going to be pretty loose right now, and you can see the trough extending out to the northeast. In case you can't tell, this is the United States coastline right in here. And uh, as this comes northward, though, notice that we have this high pressure sitting over the southeast U.S. And remember, we talked about this high being here, and it's going to be sticking around for a few days. And as this low pressure area moves up towards the north here into the, oh, actually, more northwestward towards the east central Gulf of, Me Gulf of Mexico here, it's going to be pressing up against this high a bit. And uh, this is going to help converge these trade winds out of the east into whatever trough is moving in here. And this could help consolidate the thunderstorms, pile up the air, get it to rise, and to form a more concentrated area of low pressure with time. It is going to take a lot of time with something this broad, uh, but with this high here, there's definitely enough piling up of air going around to allow a concentrated area of low pressure to develop, and that will probably happen eventually. Here's the water vapor loop, and uh, I want to show you this because A, you can see uh, the upper level winds coming across from the southwest here, shearing uh, what little low pressure uh, trough we have in the Caribbean right now. Notice that we have two upper lows in the Gulf, one over the central Gulf and one over northeastern Mexico here. This uh, one over here in the east is moving out of the way with time here and is moving north and will likely get absorbed into the westerlies within two to three days. Uh, what's interesting about this is uh, this low is going to be spinning away over here and not moving a whole lot during the next few days. As this one moves out of the way, I would expect this upper ridge to start expanding a little bit more over the southeast Gulf of Mexico and should provide a more low shear environment for this surface trough than it's currently experiencing. And as this gets out of the way, we should have a more favorable environment showing up in here. An anticyclone aloft it promotes divergence and lowers pressures at the surface and low wind shear which allows the thunderstorms to develop uninhibited and with this upper low sitting here expect this area to become ventilated pretty well uh, for the next few days and it won't be a perfect situation because of how strong out this situation has become however it should be a lot more favorable than it currently is. Now here's the NASA GEOS 5 model, something I haven't showed on here before, uh, but the example that I'm about to show you I think is a perfect illustration of uh, the forecast reasoning that I think is going to uh, win the day here eventually. This is the 48-hour uh, forecast at the surface and the colors represent precipitation. Notice that it starts to close off this low in the southeast Gulf of Mexico, still very weak at this time, but you can see the nice Bermuda high extending from uh, the central Atlantic over the southeastern United States here with a nice pressure gradient feeding into the west eastern Gulf of Mexico, uh, which again you can see the lots of piling up of air in here can easily result in the trough starting to cut off into a nice low here. And if we go out to 96 hours, two days later, notice that it starts deepening a little bit and goes across the Gulf towards the west-northwest and starts moving towards the Texas coastline in here. The difference uh, between this model and the GFS, this 
same site produces the same graphics. So now I'm switching to the GFS model here for the same time, 96 hours. Notice the difference. It has the broad week low off to the west, offset from the precipitation, which is now off to the northeast, moving towards Florida. And what it does with this is it uh, develops this and moves it northeast into the southeast part of the United States. And this just dies in here. And I have a feeling this is a typical GFS error where it tries to shove all the energy northeast into a trough that it deepens too much into the tropics. And uh, this would make sense given that its MJO forecast, which I did not shove up here, I should have, uh, shows an unrealistically strong MJO pulse in phase one, which is illustrating the model rapidly feeding back too much in this area of the world, which immediately calls into question what its forecast is going to be like during the next four to six days. And I have a feeling this feedback is going to be a problem for the model's forecast right now. The CMC, uh, the Canadian, was also taking a low up towards the Carolinas from this. I think these types of forecasts right now are pretty unrealistic and the focus of the activity should move into the eastern central gulf and then shift westward with time into the northwest quadrant of the gulf of Mexico. The situation overall hasn't changed a whole lot. We now know the origin is farther east but ultimately the focus of the activity should shift into the northwest gulf as we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. This pattern is going right to 1989 Allison June 24th through 30th uh, that developed in a the western gulf and moved north into Texas, the track of this will be different, but the overall setup uh, is going to be roughly the same. You can see uh, that the NASA model takes this into Texas within six days here, and uh, not too strong as you can see, 1,004 millibars or so. This is just a nice little moderate tropical storm, but you can see the rains that are coming towards the coast, and currently a lot of forecasts are for sunny weather along the coast here. It'll be interesting to see if uh, these forecasts get a surprise and it ends up being wet and I still think there's going to be some rain encroaching upon the coast. It's going to be hard pressed to get far enough north to hit Louisiana to the Houston area but at least South Texas down here I think is going to get a shot of rain development or not uh, in a few days. Now here's the NAFE's 500 millibar forecast for early next week during this weekend here. Uh, notice that we have this ridge uh, extending into the plain states. Now right now we have a big ridge moving to the northeast and uh, we've been talking about this pattern again very much like 1989 in June when Allison formed this uh, the ridge over the northeast is moving out. They have a trough that digs into the northeast to replace it and then we have the ridge rebuild over the plains as you can see here on the model and uh, what the GFS is doing is uh, digging this trough too deep into the southeast and trying to uh, bring all the moisture out and I'm adamant that instead we're still going to have this uh, getting caught underneath the ridge and moving into the northwest gulf given the GFS's history of having a problem and a bias in these types of situations and the NAFES you can see here as a a little bit more of a standard deviation difference in its members down here, illustrating there's likely lowering heights in the northwest gulf here underneath of this ridge. And if we look at the surface, you can really see it showing up here in the deviations, showing that any kind of low pressure is sitting south of Louisiana here on the ensemble mean. And if we look at the Canadian, it makes sense on this model because it has all the precipitation sitting in the western side of the Gulf instead of way up here like the GFS has it. So if I'm going to go with the model right now in terms of the overall location of this, I'm going to be sticking to the ones that have been supporting me uh, in the idea that I've had for the last couple of weeks, and that's the Canadian, the NAFES, and the European still brings most of the rain into the western Gulf as well. So I'm going to stick with this, uh, that the northwest Gulf is the ultimate destination for whatever comes out of this pattern. So overall, uh, this situation is a bit of a mess right now, a big long trough uh, that is going to take a while to consolidate and into any kind of a significant system. The big news will be lots of rain spreading over Florida and the Bahamas and Cuba uh, during the next couple of days. Eventually, this system is going to be moving northwest and making it into the western part of the Gulf of Mexico, as we've been talking about for a while now. And uh, despite some of the models taking this up farther east, what makes what seems to make more sense meteorologically is to continue with the idea that this is going to end up in the northwest Gulf of Mexico ultimately and uh, will be something that could produce a rain threat for the Gulf Coast here, possibly development into a tropical storm, probably not too terribly strong if it does develop, uh, but will be at least a rain threat development or not. And uh, the, the ridge here is going to be keep things nice and dry over most of this area, so it may be hard pressed for rain to get up all the way to the north Gulf Coast 
coast, but at least southern Texas and northern Mexico, I think, will get some kind of a shot of rain from this eventually as it moves westward, eventually getting under that ridge and moving inland in southern Texas or northern Mexico. And we will see how that goes right now. Let's try to get it uh, to develop if it's going to try to. I believe an attempt will be made. Conditions will become more favorable with time, but this is a very broad area. And again, if it does develop, we'll take its time organizing and will probably not become terribly strong unless it gets a very significantly longer time over water than it's currently expected to. So we will continue to watch this closely into this weekend and early next week, and we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.